So, Vow of the Disciple has been pretty picked apart at this point. I have almost a dozen runs under my belt, probably around a dozen, maybe a little bit more. And naturally, after dropping some raid tier lists on the channel recently, people want to know where this one falls on both of my lists. In terms of day one experiences, it is definitely going in the top four, even with the error code issues and whatnot. My team was not as tormented by the error codes as many other teams appeared to be. We were quite fortunate. My current top three day one experiences are Last Wish, Vault of Glass 2014, and Crota's End, with Leviathan being number four. This definitely goes above Leviathan, without a doubt. Does it go above anything else? I'm not too sure. I think it definitely gets paired up with the likes of Vault and Crota, kind of like a tie with them but not above Last Wish. We placed really well in Vow, we all played really well, and the rate itself was great the first time through, so that's why I'm placing it pretty high on the day one list. After a poor showing in Deep Stone and Vault of Glass 2021, I wasn't sure if I still had what it took to be competitive. Not even trying to get first place, just being competitive. Vault was the worst I've ever done in a raid, 25th, and Deepstone was 12th, which wasn't bad, but I know I didn't play as well as I would have liked, not to mention a really scuffed Atrax experience for my team. So in the back of my mind, I was worried that I wasn't going to be competitive in an age of dedicated speedrunners and dedicated low man raiders sweeping up all of the recent titles and podium placements. The rest of my team are all really good, but we don't play together that often. Now, did the error code issues potentially contribute to our placement? I'm sure it did to some degree. Without them, are we still top five, top 10? I think so, at least top 10, which I still would have been quite happy with because I wanted to see how competitive we were still going to be. The vault placement definitely humbled me and the squad. And for a group that basically only plays a handful of raids per year together, basically all of them being practice raids before a new raid launch, we did pretty well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. In terms of where it goes on my favorite raids to run, definitely in the upper tier as well. I'd probably place it in the, sure, I'll run two tier, which if you didn't watch the videos is the second highest tier. The reason I'm putting it there now is because there are still some things that I'm fleshing out with the multiple teams that I run with, people combining two different strategies on the first encounter, the third encounter still not being as smooth as I'd like it to be, final encounter being a nightmare for callouts if you want to go fast. The final encounter is just tough callouts wise because one missed buff basically means you gotta shut down the whole operation and reboot it, which can be a little taxing. I think the only encounter that's running pretty smoothly is Caretaker, but even that has some issues on rare occasions. Once my groups and I get a bit more experience under our belts, we iron out the strategies, I could see it being pushed into the Red Knight tier because I think it's a really fun raid. But I could also see it sticking in the tier that it's in right now because it has some of the same frustrations as King's Fall, which is also in the second tier. People need to be a little more on the ball than some other raids. You gotta be in gamer mode a little bit more. Deep Stone, Vault, Garden, you can kind of mess around and get through them, no problem. But because there are so many callouts to make in Vow and so many specific callouts, you don't really get that joke in a round time during encounters because if you do that, you're gonna miss a callout and that's gonna wipe the group. So that's kind of a bummer. The first encounter is especially guilty of that. You have three different teams doing callouts at three different stages of their obelisk. It can get really confusing really fast if there's a lot of chatter going on. First encounter, reminiscent of Scourge's opening encounter, but way more callouts. Definitely enjoy it more than something like Crown, I'll tell you that much. Although the one-off challenge where you need to wait for the lurkers to shoot the obelisk before killing them has been driving me up a wall. I don't know if it's bugged, I don't know if people are just accidentally shooting lurkers before they shoot the thing, but it's very obnoxious, so that's kind of taking some points off right now. Once we get that done, and we can just do the fight normally all of the time, instead of just when we give up on the challenge, it it'll be a lot better. 
But it's another tell people a thing that they can't see introduction encounter that we've seen before. It establishes some groundwork for the symbol callouts to come throughout the entire raid. A lot of people have asked me about Caretaker and how I like it versus something like Golgroth, and I'm guessing that's because of the taunt mechanic. If you don't know, Golgroth is one of my, if not my favorite raid boss encounter in all of Destiny. And that's because it feels like an MMO boss fight. You have people taunting back and forth. A DPS team that's got to shuffle back and forth to different zones. They need to all keep themselves alive. Then hard mode adds the unstable light debuff, whatever it's called. And when doing it in the way that I imagine Bungie wanted people to do the fight, which is six orb, not one orb, it is incredibly satisfying to do. That is the reason I like Golgoroth. I don't like Golgoroth purely because it has a taunt mechanic. It's the well-oiled machine feeling that I get from a successful kill, especially on hard mode. Also, the taunt mechanic in Caretaker is more of a stun mechanic to stop the boss from getting to the obelisk, while the Golgoroth taunt mechanic I think of as a actual taunt mechanic and you need to position the boss correctly. The Caretaker fight has this two teams doing their own things kind of deal happening, but they're two completely different things, whereas Golgroth, it feels like one big engine working together. I realize that the success of one team is dependent on the success of the other in both encounters, but they don't really feel the exact same. Anyway, how about the fight itself, not compared to Golgroth? I think it's enjoyable. It's nothing too ridiculous, though. I'll give it a B. We have two teams doing completely different jobs, which seems like it could be interesting, but they're not working together at all, so there's kind of a disconnect. Stunning the boss isn't super complex, and the combat isn't really anything remarkable. A lot of ads spawning in. That's really about it. I still enjoyed the encounter, but I think right now that's because it's one of the fights that my team struggles the least with. It also doesn't drag too much. Good symbol teams can really move this fight along, which I like, even if you're forced to do three phases every time. I like the stairs part too. Moving to a new section of the map makes progress feel good. The gauntlet event is great, chaotic fun. What I enjoy about this encounter is that everyone needs to know what's going on with almost all of the relics unless you assign people from the start. And even then, you need to know how to use at least one of them in order to succeed. And most people need to also contribute to the symbol callouts because in the heat of battle, no one ever remembers what person can see what symbols because things are just getting murdered from the moment that they spawn in and people are running all over the place. So that's kind of fun too. Check out Jez's or Danielle's raid video for some fun on that encounter. We need to shoot subscribe in my balls. So all right here, Jez, grab my yeah. balls. Right here, Jez, throw out right here, grab my balls. I really enjoy that there's basically no stopping at all, even when you're swapping out relics, like the timer boots right back up the moment you drop one in. Also, the encounter kind of explains itself. The mechanics in the fight are taught to you directly before you can move to the next room, or are at least hinted at very heavily. You don't need to do a lot of figuring stuff out, especially if you've done previous raids, which I thought was kind of neat. It is purely an execution-based fight. How well can your team do this combat and platforming encounter? Not a whole lot else to it. The final boss, I both enjoy and do not enjoy all of the callouts that you're trying to make if you're trying to go somewhat quickly. If you're going slowly, super chill, no worries there, but trying to go fast and it's like I'm memorizing digits of pi out here trying to remember who is supposed to go to what and when and all that. And then if someone messes up, you go in the wrong spot at the wrong time, resetting that flow is a whole deal. The pre-damage portion of the fight in terms of combat left a little bit to be desired. The enemies basically feel like an afterthought. You just have a bunch of non-threatening things just kind of tossed at you, very easily cleared out. The ogre is just finisher fodder to get more heavy ammo with Aeon gloves. Because people need to kind of put themselves in danger and because the section that you fight on is so small, I guess that didn't really leave a lot of room to do much else. I don't know. Even Rolk's laser attack at level is non-lethal. I saw people eating full lasers out there for breakfast and they just shrugged it off. And again, 
We have the, I can't see the thing, you gotta tell me where to go mechanic. And I think it is starting to wear out its welcome. It was heavily featured in this raid. Hopefully you watched my day one raiding god, because if you did, this was the biggest hint from that video. Maybe if there was a bit more going on here, I wouldn't have minded, but the combat challenge is so simple that that mechanic is really all I can think about. My team likened Rolk's combat to the combat of Tanix from Deepstone, where the meat of the encounter is doing the main mechanic, and then you're just kind of killing time in between, and Bungie's like, oh, we should probably give them something to do. Here's just some, some ads to go kill. At least Rolt gives you plenty of enemies to kill. They spawn somewhat frequently, but one Trinity Ghoul was taking care of everything on contest mode. There isn't really anything you needed to worry about from the combat, maybe besides Hobbs, but now that we have more than one clear under our belts, they're not really that big of a deal. The damage phase, on the other hand, was very enjoyable because the boss actually fights back the entire time. It lessens the impact of something like Well of Radiance Although it's still completely usable in the fight, and then, you know, you also have Ward of Dawn to just kind of scoop a buff. But needing to move around is a breath of fresh air compared to what we've had in terms of final boss fights. You know, Deep Stone, Garden, Crown, Scourge, Last Wish, all of those final bosses, you're big chillin' for the most part. Or at least the boss isn't really doing anything. You know, Scourge, you gotta move around a little bit. Garden, you gotta move around a little bit. I get it, Deep Stone a little bit, but you know what I mean. Vault of Glass has some pretty lethal bosses, but they're completely nullified by a Well of Radiance, minus Master Mode. They still very much hurt on Master. People really enjoyed the kick attack. I thought it was fantastic. My gripe here is mainly with some laggy laser action where the boss does a small teleport backwards before the laser attack when they are vulnerable. So you think you're out of danger and then whoop, teleport and all of a sudden you're not and you're just eating a bunch of laser. That's kind of annoying, but I don't think it's intended at all, because that'd be kind of dumb. So I'm not going to get too bent out of shape about it. I didn't really speak on the environment of the place, but I thought it was super fun. No issues about it whatsoever. Bungie always kills it here. Even the platforming sections got a little more challenging. Loved the aesthetic. Loved all of that. Overall, I really enjoyed the raid, but I do think the whole transfer of information mechanic was used a bit heavily here, and I would have liked to have seen an encounter or two that didn't rely on all of these symbol callouts. This is the most heavily featured mechanic in the franchise in raids, and if it's not, it feels like it is, telling someone something that they can't see. It happens in almost every raid in some way or another. Three out of four encounters here had the mechanic, and the fourth, Caretaker, still had symbol memorization components to it. There was a bit of symbol overload. Deepstone had a good amount of this mechanic as well, and Vault's final encounter was revamped to have this mechanic, so it's just been a lot of this in the most recent stuff. The Vault encounter from Last Wish has this information transfer mechanic, but it's only like 15% of the fight. It's not in the driver's seat. If I had one wish for the next raid, it would be to minimize the amount of this mechanic because it's feeling a little worn out right now. I would love to see more stuff where we are actually doing things as opposed to reading things to other people. I know the limitation of the first person perspective is a very significant one on top of the fact that we don't have like, you know, tanks and healers. So there's not a ton of breathing room for other things, I get it. But if it's possible to experiment, with other things, I would love to see it. Feel free to drop how you're feeling about the raid in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.